G'day, I'm Patrick from Douglas Fur Design. Welcome to the Router Bits. It's been a week since I was messing around with this circle jig last time, but I finally got some time to get back to it. And I want to have a look at the, uh, the small component of the circle guide kit, which allows you to do much smaller circles than the big giant aluminium one that we are using last time. And I'm going to cut some circles in this lump of hardwood uh, to try and make a round dish. And we'll use a, a few router bits to kind of uh, round out the bottom of that dish and cut the actual circles out um, with this little upcut spiral bit and the circle cutting jig. All right, I want to um, use the Miles Craft circle guide kit, the smaller one, to try and create a round dish. Um, so we'll have to cut out the inside circle and then the outside and then cut all the bulk of the material out using the drill press. Might have to use the bandsaw a little bit to go around, but the bulk of the work is going to be done by this. Um, if you had a lathe, you might do this kind of thing on a lathe. I don't, so I'm gonna see how far I can push the limits of this little circle jig kit. So setting up the, um, the small arm on this circle guide kit is very similar to setting up the large one. It just comes in and out of this circle guide plate. Uh, it's super straightforward. Basically, it has a little tiny hole on this ruler that gets screwed onto your center point, which I've marked on this chunk of wood just by drawing the diagonals as you would imagine. For starters, I'm going to work from the top and so I'm going to drill a little hole in here to put my screw and all of this material is later going to be taken out so it doesn't matter that I'm going to put a little hole in the, in the face of that. Um, we'll set it up first to cut um, just on the inside of this line and that's going to be the first cavity that we're going to cut and I'll use this little spiral up cut bit to do it. So I um, drilled a little hole in the centre, screwed the uh, base plate down onto that hole so the thing's going to rotate around there and then I slid this little um, device using the measuring, um, the little measuring ruler on the side here. It's got a mark for inside and outside and that refers to the inside and the outside of the round a bit that it's going to cut and I want the outside to be um, on a 20 centimetre radius. So I bring the O to the 20 and lock that off and as long as you're using um, the same size bit that they supply in the kit, which I think is about a 6.5, and that's the same thing as what I'm using in my little uh, spiral up cut. That should line up perfectly. And if it doesn't, we can just loosen it off and adjust it so that it does. Um, now I can just place this into the base, and we can just eyeball, bring the, um, the router bit down so it's touching the timber, and just make sure that it is exactly where we want because of the size of the bit, it's actually gone about a mil further than I want it to. So I'm just going to use this to back it off ever so slightly. Double check that again. That looks perfect, lock it off. So in order to get this started, I'll, um, you can either turn the router on when the, the bit is above the wood and then slowly bring it down into place and then start turning, or you can just push the router bit about a millimeter down lift the base of this up just slightly as you're starting it and then lower it down to plunge and then start moving around. And so we'll do that now and cut uh, the first couple passes of the inside of our bowl. Alrighty, so I did my um, first cut, which is going to be the inside cut for this dish uh, with the circle guide kit and little spiral up cut router bit, worked great. I've actually cut a trench about three centimetres deep, did that in three passes. Uh, that was just with the straight bit, but I will then go through in a second and use a dish cutting bit to give myself a nice round corner on that bottom edge, and I'll have to do that with a circle jig as well. But I'm now going to cut out the outside of this bowl and I'm not going to cut all the way through so I'll go through to about three or four centimeters as well using the spiral up cut bit and I'll use the circle giant circle guide kit to do that now.
So I dragged this over to the uh, drill press and used a tungsten carbide tipped Forstner bit from um, Timbercon to drill out most of the stock here. It's a fairly common way to remove a lot of stock like this where you have to retain the edges. I set the depth uh, a little bit less shallow than I want the bowl to ultimately be because I'm going to smooth out the bottom with a dish cutting bit rather than with the uh, Forstner bit because the Forstner bit leaves round lines in the bottom which uh, you can see quite clearly. You'll notice that I left one central pillar that has my screw hole in there because there's one, the dish cutting bit that I have doesn't have a bearing on it, which means I can't use the inside of this line as a guide. And I have to use the uh, circle cutter bit. Just do this first cut around the outside. Uh, ideally, I would prefer to use a dish cutting bit with a, with a bearing, but I just don't have one here. So this shows how, uh, how versatile the circle guide kit is. So we'll um, set that into our central, central pillar once more. I've got the dish cutting bit in the machine. Now to set the depth of this um, cut, I actually want to use it to clean up the, the inside of this, these walls as well to make them super smooth. So I'm going to set it so it's just touching and then I'm going to turn it on and then while I'm holding this really firmly, I'm just going to edge it less than a mil towards the wall, lock it off and then do the first pass just about a centimetre down to clean up that wall, then I'll keep pushing it down until it goes further down the depth of cut from my force in a bit. Do one pass like that, take the circle guide off, and then actually just take the rest of the material off at the same depth using the dish cutting bit. Careful not to go too close to the walls because without a bearing, you could cut into them. Alrighty, so yesterday when I was uh, playing around with this and cutting the, the bottom bottom edge of this using a, um, I actually ended up using a bullnose bit because it was longer than the dish cut. Um, the router slipped down lower than I wanted it to and got far too close to the bottom of this 45mm piece of timber, which was frustrating, but uh, now that I've learned my lesson, I've glued on a piece of uh, redwood timber, well it's actually a um, piece of red gum, sorry on the bottom, so I'll cut through that to create a bowl with um, two contrasting timbers, which I think will look really cool. Uh, sometimes I think, um, you know, there are plenty of ways to make mistakes in, in woodwork or for things to happen that you don't intend, but being able to fix them in a really creative way that sometimes gets you a product that was even better than what you intended in the first place. And that's one of the things that I really love about uh, being able to use wood like this to make pretty and unusual things. Okay, so now that this is clamped in place, I'm gonna do the same process that I did the other day. I'm gonna use the circle jig, and I'm going to firstly just run around the outside. I'm not trying to cut any material of the wall at the moment. I'm just gonna push it down about another uh, five mil or so so I can expose the nice red timber underneath. I'll um, do a ring around the outside, which I've already kind of cut a trough there, and I'll slowly move the router bit in towards the center to just cut away material bit by bit until I get towards the very center and that last bit I'll probably just have to chisel out and sand off and it should be really nice and smooth. I've also put a um, stop in place on the router so that it can't go any further down than I want it to, which is what happened yesterday. Alrighty, so I used the circle jig to do as I said. I started by doing a cut around the outside that was just a little deeper than I had before. And then I just brought that circle closer and closer and closer to the center until I'm just left with this like 40 millimeter little post in the center. Now that was used to mount the center point of our circle jig. So it was really useful to have it there. And now I've just got to remove it probably with a force for a bit and then sand it off. There's also some little ridges on the bottom here. And that's because I needed the length of this um, this bull nose bit, so, oh sorry, round nosed bit, and it doesn't have a flat bottom, which means that as I moved it closer and closer to the center, it was actually leaving little uh, troughs, and I might try and smooth that out with a flat bottom route a bit later as well. Uh, so what I'll be doing now is removing that center point, 
cutting around this line with a bandsaw just on the outside of the bowl so I'm not touching that and then I'll be smoothing off that wall using a router bit again. It's a long process for a bowl but what happens when you don't have a uh, don't have a lathe that you can use. Alrighty, so uh, in order to get rid of these ridges I've placed a flat bottom dish cutting bit in the router. I've had to use a uh, collet extender which I just picked up at Timicon really handy for jobs like this where you need to go quite deep with a short bit like this. Um, this dish cutting bit, I also put a bearing on it which is exactly the same diameter as the bit itself and that's going to help me from cutting to, into these walls at all because I don't really want to mess with that nice radius or, or the walls that I've created. And rather than using um, this circle guide kit, I'm actually using another component that comes with the circle guide kit which is this offset base. And what it allows you to do is use this turn lock system, which also comes with the whole thing, to lock that in place. And it just gives you more surface area to hold on the outside of an application like this, where otherwise the router would fall down into that hole. So this allows you to put pressure somewhere on the edge there. And that's why I've left these edges here so that I, I don't, I'm not gonna dip too far in. So I've made sure that I've set the depth of this dish cutting bit so that it can't go any lower than I want it to, but it's gonna clean up these ridges. And before I do that, I'm just gonna knock out this center pin just using um, one of my chisels and a little hammer. Clean that up as much as I can, but ultimately it'll be all cleaned up by the router bit. So this is just to make that job easier. So I've thrown this in this offset base. The way that this works, like I said, is you can always keep that flat. Uh, so I'll use, when I'm doing this side, I'll try and use this piece as a reference. And when I'm coming over to this side, I'll use this piece and I'll try not to do it here because I just don't have as much uh, to position this offset base on. All right, we are getting slowly but surely closer to this thing looking like a bowl. Uh, so after I flattened out the bottom with the uh, flat bottom uh, bowl cutting bit, I then just put the random orbital sander in there for a second and also my little, um, I can't even remember what you call these things, small micro sander. It has a name, someone will know it. Uh, just to smooth out any lines left from the router bit and that's made it really nice and smooth. I'll finish sanding the rest of it later. Then I ran it through the thicknesser a bunch of times to take off a huge amount of material off the bottom of this um, piece of red gum just because I didn't need it. I didn't want it that thick and I hadn't ended up cutting as deep as I wanted to into this base. So ideally I would have just used a thinner piece of this red, um, red gum initially but what I had was some 45mm stuff so it was just a piece of scrap so I threw it on there. Once I got it thinner and thinner, I ran the whole thing through the bandsaw and I followed that initial uh, line that I'd cut using the circle cutter jig. And what this has left me with is this rough edge and then this smooth lip. And I'm gonna use this smooth lip as a guide to cut away all of this material. And I'm gonna do it with this giant uh, spiral upcut bit. So I'll turn the whole thing upside down. I'll use that little lip as my guide, as I said, and I'll just run this slowly around the whole thing. And that should bring all the faces down to that level and make it hopefully nice and smooth. From there, basically a matter of sanding, deciding if we want to um, round over any of these edges uh, and, you know, throwing some oil on. So I'm just going to go through and take off that material now. Alrighty, so we used the spiral up cut, did a wonderful job on the edges there. Uh, I just cleaned that up with a random orbital sander, just so it looked a bit smoother. Because um, I was having to take off a few mil at a time with the spiral up cut, so it cut through the material perfectly. But the more material you take off, I found 
the less smooth the final result is. So if I'm taking off just a hair, even on a really long bit like this, I can get a really smooth finish because I was taking off like three and four mil in some places of, you know, of almost 60 millimeters of timber there. It just introduces a tiny bit of vibration. And now that's not the fault of the bit, it's just that I'm pushing it through a lot of wood. So that's just something to consider. Uh, what I've decided to do now is just use this tiny little round over bit. I think it has a radius of about 1.5 mil and I'm just gonna round over the inside. You could basically break that edge just using sandpaper if you want, but this just gives you a really uniform finish and then I'll sand over the whole thing afterwards. I'm still deciding whether I wanna do the outside edge. I actually really like this square edge down the bottom here. I think it's quite modern and it really uh, shows the, the detail of these two timbers. So I'll start by rounding over that inside lip, give it a sand, see how I feel about it then. All right, after all, after all the routing and sanding, I finished this off with some burnishing oil and this burnishing brush. Now this is a slightly atypical use of burnishing oil because traditionally this is used with a hand sanding method to create like a really fine slurry. But what this burnishing brush does is you can put the oil on, let it soak in for a couple minutes, turn this on high and put it on the oil, spread it all around and the friction, the heat created from the brush just really speeds up the process of the oil soaking into the timber and hardening slightly. So I literally just finished the process with this. There's no residual oil on the surface. It doesn't really need to dry. I mean, I wouldn't put food in it straight away, but the, um, it just speeds up this process of finishing a small object like this so much compared to um, hand rubbing or spraying, spraying a polyurethane or any other coating. Now, I haven't had the chance to try yet. I have been using this quite a bit lately. You could probably use it with a Danish oil or another oil, but this burnishing oil seems to work really well for it. So it, um, it's a really nice quick way to get a beautiful um, sort of satiny finish, a really natural finish on, on pieces of timber like this. So I'm actually, I'm really happy with how this turned out. It was quite time consuming and I did make some errors, but <laughs> If I hadn't, then I wouldn't have added this second colour and I think it looks fantastic and it really justified all of the work we put in. At the end of a weekend, if you can come away with something like this, you'd be pretty happy. Now, I would need to charge quite a lot if I was going to make these commercially and there would be quicker ways to do this if you had a lathe or... But um, what I've learned in this process is that you can do it with a router. It's not terribly complicated. Um, it's just a matter of trial and error, but you could expand this to any size you wanted. If you wanted a really large tray to put on your table, you could laminate different timbers together. You could get some really beautiful effects. And you might not be able to do a giant one like that on a lathe. So that's where this process and the, uh, the circle guide kit would really come in handy.